Two years ago, director Wong Kai Wei achieved cult status with Chungking Express, a low-budget, high-energy look at the perils of modern romance. The movie struck a chord with metropolitan lovers around the world. Shot guerrilla style in the back alleys and front roofs of Hong Kong, it combined frenetic camera work with a wistful awareness of the difficulties of connecting emotionally in the teeming city. Quentin Tarantino snapped up Chungking Express for his distribution company, obviously responding to its energy and visual flair. Wang Kai Wei's latest picture, Fallen Angels, is equally stylish, but with a darker edge, its millennial mood reflecting the anxieties of the colony on the eve of being handed over to China. Moving Pictures asked the director for a guided tour of his city on the verge of a nervous breakdown. If I didn't live in Hong Kong, my style would probably be different. The only way I can make a film in a place is I have to know the place well, the people well, and I think I, I know Hong Kong well. This is the most uh, busy place in Hong Kong. It's fast and it is confusing. You know? Anything can happen. It's very much like a small mini Hong Kong. Uh, the people living here are from different cultural backgrounds and they squeeze in a limited space. This is the shop. This is the grocery stores where I buy the music for Chungking Express, the Indian music. It's not very expensive, it's cost only $20 Hong Kong. This is the place where we shoot the uh, shooting scene in Chungking uh, Express with Bridget Lin shooting uh, two Indians. This is the place. I like this place and uh, I, I have a, a lot of fun uh, shooting here. So this is Mina Express, uh, one of the key locations in uh, Chungking Express and Fallen Angels. This is my cameraman, my DP, Chris Toyle. Basically, you're shooting in these kind of places where we're going to get hustled off the street anyway. You're shooting in the, in, in the airport or the MTR or, or Chongqing Express where you're going to be shot if you stay more than 10 minutes, you know, in one place. So, you kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, the style is dictated by the circumstances in which you work. Oh my God, not you. Well, anyway, welcome anyway. This is where I live. In the film, this is basically where Tony Leung uh, lives. And uh, when he was not home, Fei Wong, who is like working in Midnight Express, she'd break in every day to see what this boy that she'd fallen in love with was really doing in his life. Never let a film crew into your apartment. I lost most of my CDs. I lost my fax machine. Uh, the phone never worked again for a year. It was overtaken. My first film, uh, As Tears Go By, is quite successful, uh, critically and, and commercially. And uh, 
my second film is not so uh, good in box office because they expect something like a, a standard martial art movies. Most of the Hong Kong audience, they like linear narrations, uh, very simple films. In fact, I don't know what my style is because I change from time to time. When I was making uh, Chung King's Press and Four Ninjas, they said, well, this guy making film very fast. Uh, when I was making Days of Being Wild, people said, well, he makes slow films. I think uh, I would consider myself uh, influenced by the East traditions more than the West. Maybe my films uh, look uh, uh, more westernized than other Chinese cinemas, uh, uh, Chinese filmmakers, but I think uh, in the heart it is quite uh, Eastern thinking. I'm very aware of time because it's gone and it won't come back. Uh, that is very Eastern. <laughs> We have the paintings of Edward Hopper and I said I want the film to be something like a monochrome and uh, there's a lot of green in the film. We, we actually see very monochrome, yeah, but because he's always wearing his sunglasses. I mean, you know, it has a, you know, things seem to kind of dilute, you know, the colors of it. Also, I because I made some mistakes in the printing. So. <laughs> he put three filters in front of the lenses, so it's always uh, a problem in focus. We may have made a mistake, <laughs> but we stuck with it, and and there was enough support from him and from some of the people on the film that we, we had to preserve, you know, we had to go with it. You know. And that you don't get every day. I don't think you get that in Hollywood. That's why we're not going. There's offers, but I, I think uh, I would like to stay to work for a few more years. To some directors, uh, Hollywood is their dream. So, uh, if they want to do it, uh, why not? China is going to take over in Hong Kong next year, and uh, but uh, nobody knows what will exactly happen. It's something which is very uh, exceptional, and I think uh, something interesting will happen here. So I, I rather stay. Hong Kong cinema is quite different from uh, Chinese cinemas. In China, they are more organized. They, they want to know exactly what you want. And Hong Kong is more flexible. So uh, I think uh, each party has to uh, get used to each other for, for, for a certain time. But I think I will stay and, and uh, make more films. of shootings we work in a very small tea house the only way we can do is uh, to shoot with a wide angle lens but I think uh, we should uh, do something more interesting so I asked Chris to wear an extremely wide angle lens he said yes but in that case the face of uh, Michelle is uh, she looks like a banana <laughs> It was about space. We use a wide angle because these people are so close together but so distant, you know, uh, you know, and the camera should be close to them, therefore you feel very close to them, but you know that they're really separated by a great distance of, you know, incomprehensibility, you know, they can't talk to each other. That's after the fact. I mean, the real fact is it was a small space and we had to get close, right? And then you start going in that direction and you say, hey, it's working, this is interesting. And then you try and put on another lens and you say, shit, you know, I mean, anything else doesn't work.
When you shoot a gun, you know, the camera, the cameraman, if it's me, he usually goes, oh! <laughs> so I think this is partly how the handhold style that we've developed together started. You know? This distorted you know, way in which things, you know, move in and out of your, your perception. The way, you know, things are blurred, time is blurred. The way things sort of jump, you know, and suddenly you're in a different space and you, and you realize it. It's how you perceive violence. He won't admit it. But I hope it's poetic. I hope it's about poetry. I hope it's about the poetry of life. I hope it's about the poetry of love, the poetry of, of the impossibility of, you know, various things, that, you know, and, 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 and the, the consequences of, 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 of certain choices. I'm sure a lot of it, and of course time. There's so much of this stuff is about time, and obviously, you know, you play with the time in which the film passes through the camera. I mean, this seems to be a logical step, you know, to me. And it's fun. Talk like a film critic. Yes, I, yes, I've been, I've been reading, I've been reading Tony Rains all week. And there's a special preview of Fallen Angels this Thursday at Nottingham's Shots in the Dark Festival.